Hey everyone. Today we're going to explore using granular synthesis and Foley recordings to create soundscapes and textures that can be added as layers to your bass. Lately I've been creating some Neuro and Reese style basses that this is particularly useful for because they lose a lot of their highs when you detune them. A lot of future bass music has bass sounds with a lot of highs and mids, so being able to design a granular layer to give them presence and bite is really useful for your sound design skill set. Conveniently, Ableton Live has a granular synth available for free to Max for Live users. It's called Granulator. It's an instrument designed by Robert Henke of Monolake. Note that you do need to have Max for Live installed to run Granulator. And to find out more about it and how to install it, you can just check out the links below. To demonstrate this technique, I'm going to show you inside one of my own projects. This track has two separate bases that each have a granular layer on them. Here's a preview. I'm going to solo out the two basses, the main basses, so you can hear them on their own. All right, let's go through the components of the top bass here. You can see it's divided up into a top, a mid, and a sub. So let's check these guys out. This is the granulated layer. Okay, that was created from a Foley sound that was run through a granular synth. Let's add the mid now. And that's the meat of the patch. And then we've got the sub layer in there too. And altogether they make a nice full sounding bass. But the piece we're really concerned with is this granulated layer. So let's dig into granulator now. First of all, when you install granulator, it won't install into your regular Max for Live directory. You have to go looking for it down here under Places in Packs because it is an additional Ableton Live pack. You see it up here, Granulator 2. And there's a variety of devices here that are designed as companions to Granulator, but really all we need for this one is the Granulator device itself. It'll initialize down here. And one of the sweet things about Granulator that I like about it versus other granular synths is drag and drop functionality. You can take your samples, drag them right onto the interface here and they load versus having to navigate through some type of browser, which is just slower. So I have uh, my own folder of custom Foley sounds that I've created. These are household sounds that I thought were interesting that you can rip and mangle and turn into textural layers with Granulator. In this case, it's just a custom little directory that I created from things like chip bags, Paper crumpling, paper tearing, and water sounds. Now, even though you can record these easily around the house, not everybody has a good recorder. So I've actually made this very useful pack of sounds available for free. If you click the link below and come back to my site, you can download it there and you can use all of these samples for yourself. They are all recorded in stereo with a Zoom H4n recorder. They're all 44.1K, 24-bit, nice uh, high quality samples. So they should be useful for you and you're welcome to use them. So in this case, let's use the toilet flushing one because I like the sound of the, of the water. Water makes for some very interesting granular sounds. So this is what granulator sounds like. You can see we have a piece of the audio sample that is being played and effectively looped. You can change where that appears with the file position parameter. So I'm just going to make a couple of parameter tweaks here that are going to make it a lot easier for us to get uh, the aggressive and abrasive types of sounds that are going to be useful for bass sound design. First thing I'm going to do is change voices to one. We only need one voice here. And now we're going to change the window and it's by standard, you can see it's this curved shape that has a fade in at the beginning and the end. We want something that's much more aggressive and abrasive sounding. So we're going to use the fall 
which creates more of a sawtooth down type of effect. You can just hear the difference already. It's much, much more abrasive. And then we can take the spike parameter and we can use that to further dial the sound in. Make it more percussive. I'm going to leave it at zero for now. A key parameter we're going to be working with is the grain size over here. You can just see as we move that, that's going to really help us to create those mangled sounds. Now, Granulator conveniently has a LFO built into it. So we're going to take the LFO here. We're going to leave it in its default sine wave position. And we are going to change the cycle, make it a little bit faster. And what this will enable us to do is to use the LFO on the grain size, sounding like this. Okay, and we can also use the LFO on the file position parameter as well, sounding like this. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and tweak these parameters until I get something that I'm happy with. All right, I've gotten some parameter settings here that I'm really enjoying. I've increased the cycle speed of the LFO to be a longer cycle time and just changed the grain size to fit to exactly what I want here. So here's what it sounds like. <laughs> The next thing I'm going to do is increase the spread. So in Granulator, it has the ability to detune the left and the right channels, giving you a nice wide stereo image. And that's very useful for the top layer of basses because usually I would use stereo widening on those anyways. So it's nice to have that built right into Granulator. And if that isn't quite wide enough for you, you can make it even wider sounding by knocking out the left and the right phase of the LFO by just a little bit. The final touch that I'm going to put on this is some dynamics processing. One of the challenges of using this type of sound is that you have a lot of dynamic range in it. And normally dynamic range is great for transients and punch, but for a sound like this where we really want it to have a heavy presence, then I want a much more even dynamic level. So I'm going to use Live's built-in multiband dynamics device for this. I'm going to deactivate the lower band because we really don't need any low frequencies in this sound. It's going to be layered with lower frequency bases anyways. And I'm going to use it as a upwards compressor. So we're going to select the below function and we're going to take the threshold all the way up to the top on both the mid and the top bands and we're going to increase the ratio to infinity to one so what this means is any piece of the signal that is below zero db which will be all of it it's going to push up to zero db by an infinite to one ratio so basically it's going to even the entire sound every aspect of it all the way up to zero db to make it a nice full totally present sound Normally this would be a terrible idea on most audio, but in this case, because of the way we're using this sound, it's gonna create the effect that we want. Now, before I play this, I'm gonna reduce the output by quite a bit because it's gonna be squelchingly loud. So here's what we got. All right, let's quickly render that to audio by freezing the track. And I'm gonna create a separate audio track and Option copy the freeze out, which will give us the frozen audio file. And it also leaves our original instrument here available to do more things with. And that's kind of the next step is once you have this set up, you can just start jamming fresh samples in here and continue your sound design process and just creating waves and waves of interesting different glitchy textures. Now we can go back to our Foley sounds folder and start throwing in new samples. So let's try the paper crumple this time. Let's tweak the settings a little bit, see if we can get something slightly different. All right, so here's what we have. What I did is I dropped the grain size, so the grain size is smaller, and I took the LFO length, the cycle length way up, so the LFO is moving much more slowly. Uh, I dropped the spread a little bit, and I played with the phase on the LFO. So. 
Let's take that. We can freeze it out. Option copy. And there we are with sample number two. So you can keep doing this over and over with more and more and more samples and just create your own banks of these granular textures and then save them to your own sample directory and use them in future projects. So there's one last thing I want to speak to before we wrap up today, and that is how to integrate these types of fully granular sounds with your basses. So your bass obviously is going to be playing different pitches, different MIDI notes. And one way to do this, the simple way, is to just render out the sounds like I have here. I've just used a MIDI input note of C3, and they're kind of atonal sounds. And you can just chop and slice and, and, and fade to be able to get the sounds to melds. You know? So you could go in here, and one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts is Command-E to chop that sound, and you can enable the fades, and right-click, and you can go um, show fades right there. And you can use the little faders to be able to meld those sounds together. Okay, that's one technique. The other technique is to actually have granulator play different pitches. So you could easily just copy the MIDI pattern that you're using for your main bass, and you could copy that into granulator's MIDI track, and you could have granulator actually play the MIDI pitches. And that will get the sample playback to follow different pitch inputs, as well as the modulation that we're doing to the grain size and file position. So that's another approach. I would suggest experimenting with both and seeing which sounds better. Keep in mind that when you do drop the grain size and you get into very small grain sizes, you do end up creating a pitch to your actual output. So it will start to create um, very distinctly pitched effects the smaller the grain size is. So just be aware of that. And if you start to get stuff that really clashes with your bass, maybe increase the grain size a little bit or try experimenting with it in another way. So that wraps up our tutorial today on granular synthesis and using Foley sounds. Remember, you can come back to my site and grab this Foley sounds sample pack for free. You can get all those 24-bit 44.1K stereo files in the VIP section of my website. And if you liked what you learned here today and you really want to take your music to the next level, I'd love to invite you to come back to the website where you can check out our online masterclasses in everything ranging from introductory synthesis to advanced sound design, music production, and mixing and mastering. We'd love to have you on one of our courses. Thanks for watching and take care.